again, everyone. This is Game Collector, and you might notice at first that everything is in widescreen now. Well, that's because a little mishap happened, and I sat on my old camera by mistake, and... <sighs> yeah, the old camera's broken, and now I have one that has widescreen function and autofocus! But it required me to make a completely new setup, so... Not happy with that. But hey... Now, for cel to celebrate the coming of the Iron Man 3, I'm going to do a few Iron Man figure reviews. Like, two or three of them. None of them from the third movie, because the third movie toys suck ass. Hard. I mean, if you could only move the figure's legs forward and backwards without being able to, you know, turn them in any way, or, you know, even get them into a... Not that I'm fond of this figure, but anyway, off that topic, and it's much easier to display with the next figure after this video, um, I'm starting things off with the Tony, with the Iron Man Mark I. Naturally, it's the movie figure, but you gotta start somewhere. I mean, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. And yes, I totally had to say that. Now, this is the one from the Iron Man 2 figure line, and one of the things I hate about it is that it, the legs are... These bits right here, that you can probably see my fingers on, get in the way of posing the legs in any way, shape, or form outside of turning to the left and turning to the right. There is a way you can do it, but it's kind of tricky and hard and... <sighs> uh, this is probably one of the... Uh, the less done with this figure, the better. Um, anyway, it, while the leg movement is greatly hindered, at least he has knees and elbows and a shoulder that can go mostly up and mostly down. I mean, the predecessor is much better, I can tell you that right now. And by predecessor, I mean the one from Iron Man 1, which will be featured in just a few moments, but to further out things, he comes with this little thing that snaps on here. Does it snap on? This thing doesn't really have much of a place to fit on this toy. And there's the oversized flamethrower. It actually fires pretty hard and pretty far. So with that out of the way, we can uh, look at this little mix-and-match card thing it came with that these letters in Iron Man card dot com don't actually apply to because the website was never set up. Ever. I'm dead serious. The website was never set up. And I don't remove these from the package because I don't want to lose them. I don't want them getting all yellow, but, um, as you can tell, if I wiggle it around, you can, you know what, let's, let's just say screw that for the time being. I'm going to open this up just for you guys. And God, I already regret it. Pull them right out, and... The first card is the head and the leg, the head and the arms. The second card is the legs, and the third card is the body. And you just kind of slide them together, and that's what you get. With the head kind of overlapping the neck. And back in their little package they go, and I have no idea what any of these cards mean, because Marvel didn't go through with them. And I'd say that's it, because, oh, he also has a neck. He can look back and forth, and that's about it. But there's more to this review, because I'm doing the big five-inch one from the first movie. And this means... I get to tilt the camera up a bit. And look at that glorious autofocus! 
and stand boy back. And while this one, not having a cumbersome weapon, has a cumbersome left arm, and this one, instead of using a button, uses a pullback gimmick and fire. Wow, that's actually pretty good. I heard the bounce on that. But, yeah, as you can see, this one doesn't have the same leg problems as this one. I couldn't even get this one's legs to go forward because of all the work. And his arms go nearly all the way out to his sides! How about that? And the leg can go all the way up forward and kind of bend at the knee. This one doesn't have good knees, but the other one does, but this one has better thighs or hips. Oh, and he also had a little foot. Yeah, the other one has a foot, too. Yeah, so this is more of a consolidated review of two figures as the Mark I, because where else is Tony Stark going to start with a box of scraps while he's stuck in a cave? And no, I don't have the boxes for these guys anymore, either. So... But it's the Mark I. Do I really need to say anything about it? Other than Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps, which I've already said three times during this review. I think you've heard it enough, and you're already sick of it. And Wow, this review has probably been my shortest in a while. But... I told myself I'd be doing Iron Man stuff before I got back to my Transformers stuff, and this has been my 101st episode, so say yay for 101 for Mark 1. Yay! I'll see you guys next week with yet another Iron Man review, and this one is a little bit more main... This one was a mainstay from the 80s, or the main one of the big mainstays before Iron Man got the extremist suit. In the comics, anyway. Later!